Welcome, I'm Ike and this is Draw Process. I'm gonna share my process of becoming my practice of the art of making comic books, uh, or you could say uh, my practice of sequential storytelling. So uh, I'm gonna draw a comic book page and you can see how I do that and I'll make comments on that, but I'm also gonna share what I'm dealing with, thinking about, uh, approaching in my own uh, development and daily practice. Okay big scene uh, I needed to end this fight quickly and there were a lot of guys left standing so uh, I just wanted in one big shot uh, sword is swinging and knocking everyone into the water or they're jumping into the water and the same's happening with Farah behind him and then uh, the leader woman uh, she jumps in the water to escape and then grabs on to King Croc who's swimming away with sun in his mouth um, as yeah, Sword and Sun just stand on the raft alone with guys kind of drowning in the water. Um, at first I was going to have other smaller crocs like in the water, um, trying to like grab and eat them. Um, I decided not to, uh, partly I thought, well, they probably wouldn't want to be that close to King Croc. So they probably, uh, weren't there at that exact moment. Um, yeah, this first, uh, this first panel is quite a large action scene. Um, this, this is probably the biggest I've done ever in terms of the number of characters. Um, so we've got like a, a large flat raft, a large flat plane that everyone's standing on with not too extreme of a perspective, um, so that it's it's pretty it's pretty simply a sp just a plane, a space to draw them on, make them a little bigger in the foreground, a little smaller in the background, but nothing that requires a lot of perspective work. And um, this is the first time I've shown the other side of uh, of the river. Um, the canal, and so there's other sorts of buildings there. Instead of just this big blank wall, I actually had to draw buildings, so I had to make sure that they do not create tangents or confusion with the figures that I've drawn. Um, and, and you know, to layer all these figures um, and draw such a big action scene, uh, it, it was a nice... Uh, challenge isn't the right word. It was, it was nice to try it out and see, um, just how I want to do that because this is about as complicated as it gets. Uh, and I want to have a lot of action in this comic. And so this is like, okay, how do I accomplish this? Um, how, cartoony do I let the figures be when I have to draw that many you know if there's just one figure uh, in the panel it's a lot easier to take your time and and want it to look just perfect or whatever and uh, and if you if you struggle to capture like a cool pose they're doing uh, you might not mind struggling uh, because you're, you're you, you want to get it right um, but when there's a ton of figures on the page uh, in a, in a big scene together, it's, you can't be, well, you, it's tempt, you know, it's tempting and it's desirable for me to be less precious with it. Um, and so then I see kind of what, what do I naturally do if I'm more, if I'm trying to be more quick and more relaxed. And that's giving me this little peek behind the curtain at what kind, how I'm going to be as an artist over time, like where I'm heading, what, is natural in me. Um, I I think if you can give yourself those experiences like that, where you get to peek behind the curtain, you know, at at what's natural to you. Um, what you know, where where do you seem to? How do you seem to draw when no one's looking? How do you seem to draw when, uh, when it's, it's the conditions are such that you're just kind of flowing with it? Um, 
and you might see that there's things you want to improve in. Uh, obviously, you're going to see uh, technique and anatomy that you might want to improve, but um, on some more abstract level, you're seeing into your soul. And uh, you might be able to build on that. Uh, lean into it. So yeah, that was, uh, you know, so that first panel um, turned out um, maybe more cartoony and, and less solid than than uh, some of my other panels or than I would have preferred, but at the same time, uh, it also feels like I, it was in the right direction and it's, I want to do more of it. Um, so this, this pose with, uh, sword swinging his, his sword to the side like that. Um, I, as I was drawing it, I realized it reminded me of the barbarian on the cover of the old game, the hero quest, which they remade. And uh, the uh, he's he's swinging kind of in a similar pose. Um, I didn't intend for that. I don't, I don't know. Like there are there are people that say they just have images in their mind. They just see what they want to draw if they're at a sketchbook or they're going to draw the comic. Um. I don't think that I'm like that. I, I construct my drawings. I construct the figures in in a in a physical space. Um, I get more. It's more in my body. I'm not. Maybe maybe that's a way that I'm less visually intelligent or visually minded than some artists. But I don't see pictures exactly, and then and then build my picture accordingly. I I feel it in my body. Uh, I feel the gesture that I want to show and then drawing it with my hand is like an extension of just moving my body in that position. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm really having a hard time describing that, but... I know it's different than other people have said they their experiences that I I don't just see a finished image exactly. Um, I I build it uh, and build them into relation in relation to other pieces of the drawing, and I make decisions of what I'm going to put in the drawing as I go, and I see like more of the composition and you know what ele where where the elements should go. Like I knew there. And I knew I wanted a guy in the foreground in front of sword uh, falling down. And uh, so the pose I put him in had to do with the space available to put the person. It's like, okay, do I want him to cover up any part of sword's body? If not, then I've got to fit him in this space. If so, then, you know, what, what's, what position can he be in? Um, you know, and then this other guy here I'm drawing right now, I, I, I was okay with him covering up a little bit of Sword's uh, leg. It was the less important leg when it comes to uh, uh, where your eye's going to go and uh, what's needed for to communicate his, his position. Um, and it doesn't cover his foot. It just covers part of the shin, uh, I think. Maybe it did end up covering the foot more than I yeah, thought it would originally. Um, but it didn't completely cover the foot. Uh, the, the, the pencil rectangle, the pencil line going around the, the outside of this panel. So, so this panel is a full bleed panel that goes all the way to the edge of the, of the printing or the paper. Um, but I still go ahead and mark the boundary of where the panel would have been. And this, excuse me, 
this helps me um, make sure that my word balloons and all the important art fit in that space. Now, outside that space is is the gutter, is is the empty zone. Uh, so there is some art past that line that will be visible, but I don't want any of my word balloons outside that line, uh, and 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 it just helps me kind of see. Uh, and the, that some of this is going to get cropped off after that. Like this guy I'm drawing right now, he's mostly past that line. And a little bit of his arm, maybe his head might touch. Uh, what page is this? 29. So it'd be in, So this is a, an odd numbered page. It's going to be on the right hand side of the, of the comic. So he's, uh, we're going to end up cutting off a little bit of his arm. And then he'll be stapled into the book. Uh, that part of the paper, so you you won't be able to see some of him, and, and I knew that, and I'm I'm gonna draw him anyways. Um, so there's a few guys that are dying, laying down on the raft around where I'm penciling in this figure, and I'm very aware this is getting very close to the edge. It's getting cut off. So I went ahead and erased it. And I'm aware that there's not a lot of room. Like, I don't want to confuse the foreground figure with these blobs, these shapes in the background uh, behind him. And they're going to get cropped off anyway. So I was really indecisive there. Do I... Maybe those guys moved. Maybe they <laughs> rolled into the water. Like, uh, Or maybe maybe I can fake the perspective a bit that like maybe they're just a little further out of, out of the scene. Um, later I go ahead and add them in, uh, to a degree. Um, but, but it was, it was a little problematic spot. Um, so earlier, uh, on a page, Farah was up high on a wall and, and jumped down. She was on that side of the canal, the side that I'm now drawing, um, to draw the, the scene with these these figures, I didn't have to figure out the perspective yet. Um, and you'll see that just now I, I was finding the perspective for uh, the lines on the raft of the boards, the ropes. But um, I needed to know where my horizon and vanishing point is so that I could uh, put pers put these buildings into perspective um, in, a, in a somewhat believable way. Uh, I did not have any reference or or really like sketching of, of how I wanted to do this. So I'm just making it up on the page. Uh, I knew I wanted some simple shapes. Uh, I went with like arches and curves. Um, because sometimes uh, if my figures are a little more jagged or straight edged, um, and those those straight lines in the background can maybe create tangents or something or uh, a, the curve is is a much easier to to see shape I don't I don't know how to explain that um, but but yeah I feel like they they're softer in some way um, helps it look like it's in the background but yeah I just threw in some buildings there um, And, and I want to be able to do that. Like, I mean, the sketchbook work is important and to get practice at buildings, which uh, I did before I started this comic. Uh, the next comic I have not written yet, but when I do, I'm going to uh, do some more sketchbook work because I'm going to be figuring out the, the where they're located for the next story. It's going to be a different looking place for sure. Um so, uh, but I, I, you know, I'll have to wait until I write it and see what's, what's needed before I start, uh, putting in any work on, on planning and figuring out some new, uh, you know, influences and, uh, for architecture and whatnot. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, I want, I do like being able to just make it up on the page, um, which takes you know, take some practice.
Yeah, so drawing comics, you got to do poses that, like a lot of different poses. Um, you got to, yeah, develop some cheats for for how you can puppet tear your figures. Um, like the what had me thinking that was uh especially the <laughs> the um the woman here uh her name's Denise I don't know if I mentioned that yet but it doesn't really come up but um in the comic this particular comic but um she's diving into the water and that just came to mind to like I just kind of figured that out it was in my thumbnail but even in the thumbnail I was just like oh, I'm just gonna show her diving in towards the camera and and I was able to pull it off in a, in a way that I liked um from lots of practice posing my figures in in the past I guess um but yeah that's not a yeah right here this this is not a uh, a common pose to do um and it's got some foreshortening and whatnot not a ton. Um, yeah, to that point about the, the kind of foreshortening, like I could have had her jumping more directly towards the camera, which would have created more extreme foreshortening. Like her, um, her, uh, torso would have, you would have seen no length to it. Maybe you would have just seen like shoulders and then legs coming down like behind her chest with no hip, or almost no hip, almost no torso. That those sorts of angles on a figure, I avoid because, um, yeah, I have to pose my figures for the comic. Um, but you get to choose your camera angles, and there are angles that uh, can be more difficult because, like, like I was saying with her diving pose, like. If, if she was going directly towards the camera and you, and, and you can't see the torso and hips much, like how are you going to capture that perspective? You know, like that's a little challenging, but, but make it look good. Like if her legs are, if her arms are coming down straight in front of her and her legs are also going straight down behind, you know, behind her arms from the camera's view there. I mean, what is that going to look like? It, it, you're not going to see the pose very well. And so how are you going to, show the, the, uh, uh, to, to show the, 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 the cues that this, this is interesting and that, that what things are. So like, like if someone was holding, if you had a character holding a gun, like towards the camera, you know, or punching and you've got that arm, just the, all, almost all you can see is the fist. Well, you might see a little bit of the forearm, the tricep, like a bit of the arm, but then like, if you want that to, you know, if you want to be able to tell what those little blobs are behind the hand, that it's part forearm, a little elbow edge, a little tricep, like how are you going to show that without uh, really careful uh, placement and, and probably some uh, reference? Um, and even then, is it going to look that interesting and dynamic if it's flattened out? Um, so, uh, yeah, for to make it look good and interesting and easy to read, but also easier to draw. And I, and I do take that into account. Now, uh, I try not to get, uh, I try not to restrict myself from growing and, and, and being flexible. Um, so when I choose my camera angles, I'm not like avoiding, uh, cause it's, it is possible to, to always do just kind of like a, a static, uh, you know, shoulder level or whatever camera, uh, and, and just, and even just have your figures just standing straight up in the, in the panel. Um, but but regardless of how you pose them, even just having that that constantly static camera uh, with no you know you're not looking up at them, you're not looking down at them. The, the 
um, you can over restrict through where you choose to position the camera. Um, and then it, you're not practicing or drawing things from different angles. You're not, uh, learning to loosen up and be capable of those, those other angles. And then it's going to look more static, less interesting. Um, in, uh, in college, when I learned about, uh, you know, cinematography, lighting and, uh, and editing and all that. Um, I was very interested and fascinated by, uh, how they direct the shots in, in, in film. And, and I had a class on that and, uh, yeah, really, really ate that up. Um, even though I wasn't in film, I was in, uh, I was more specifically focused on, on the sound design but uh, I had to take film classes too and, and worked on some student films. But um, that is something that is uh, something that's nice to have in your toolbox. Uh, as a comic artist, if you, if you, if you watch, you know, movies and you, you can get this from looking at well done comics too, but um you know, if, if the script says the guy walks in the room and there's a guy sitting at a, de you know, the, sh the sheriff is sitting at a desk that comes to mind because a, a friend's comic page had that recently and he did a great job with it. Um, so, uh, but yeah, like someone's sitting at a desk, someone walks in, uh, comes and sits down, whatever, like how do you tell that in an interesting way? Is the camera low uh, and you see the objects on the desk? Is, is there a lot of, is everything in shadow? What's the, what's the mood? Is the light coming from the window? Is it a desk lamp? And if is, is the camera low? What are the characters doing? Do you, is this, are you going to tell story through the guy preparing his cigar? You know, like, uh, what those cigar clippers and then it's like the mafia and then you chop the guy's finger off with it. Like you set it up. Um, there's some, there's props, there's something being done that, that, that becomes part of the, the gears of, you know, of the story of, of, of the visual. Um, if you, it, it's good to be able to think in those visual terms and in those cinematic terms, um, to be able to tell story through, through the visuals. Um, there's other ways to do it. I, I think someone could absolutely, uh, be gain in capability, you know, to do that without any film influence. And that would be lovely to see. Um, but film is definitely a strong place to look for visual storytelling. Um, so I think on this page, I think I did use the harder pencil at first so that it's lighter, uh, like a five H and then I think I switched to two H. So now I'm going back over the pencils. What I'm now, you know, hopefully maybe someday I won't even need uh, an extra layer of pencils before I can go straight to ink that I can just trust myself to put my lines in the right place in a good place. Um, and I, and I, I could have perhaps here, I just didn't want to run the risk of screwing this up. Like I, I'd, I'd put it, I don't know, an hour in at this point, maybe. Um, I did not want to, uh, you know, to need to use white out and make mistakes, uh, in, in my, in my inking. So to just take some time to, uh, or just, or well, not just make mistakes, but be less happy with, with the poses and stuff. If I, if I just wing it. So obviously with my pencil, I can not only erase, but kind of like make a line and then adjust it a bit, adjust it a bit, uh, and get, and get things in a better place. So, um, 
so I, yeah, especially with how many figures there were and they're kind of unclear. Uh, some of them aren't super clear how they're posed. So I'm getting that in place with the harder pencil now. Okay. Um, hmm. I wonder what I should talk about here. Uh, uh, yeah, I, these videos have gotten a little longer. Uh, some of them were like 18. I think I had one that might have been like 18 minutes. And then a lot of them are around 28 to 35. But I've started letting them get longer um, so that I don't have to speed up as much on uh, on the inking phase. Um, so I think it's for the best that uh, I don't speed up too much. And, uh, and that means it is a longer video. It also means I talk for longer. I now uh, it's it's working fine. Like, but it, I do have to sit and talk for now uh, forty eight minutes. Um, but uh, but I, I tend I tend to not have any trouble thinking of things to say. Uh, I I got a lot to say. Uh, I like talking. I guess. Um, I do hesitate at times on what to say though. I don't like to uh I don't like to give advice or speak uh prescriptively or uh or uh, or lie. <laughs> I don't like to lie. I don't like to say things I don't really mean um which causes me to slow down sometimes and hesitate before I speak. I mean that's that's not a bad thing to learn. Um I think when I was younger, it was easy to, I think it was partly being younger that, uh, quick to give people whatever they want, you know, to, um, to placate and please, uh, and achieve also. It's not just like people pleasing. There's, there's some sense of trying to, uh, achieve something there too, but, um, to learn to, uh, not, just please people and uh, not just be nice is uh, is a good skill to learn uh, for me. Uh, it's been good. And some people are, you know, maybe there's uh, other people that always have, always tend to put themselves first and always speak their mind and too brash. I mean, maybe they need, maybe they don't need this lesson. But for me, someone who's more uh, anxiety prone, uh, self-conscious, uh, prone and whatnot. Um, it's, it's, uh, better to learn to speak my mind. Uh, so, uh, yeah. And I don't know, I don't always know what my mind thinks. <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, figure that out here on this YouTube too. Uh, you know, like I have, I've got a few, you know, core ideas that drive me, uh, with this. And, uh, and I'm trying to just let, let them develop, let my ideas develop naturally and not, not push it. So I have a religious background and I feel like I have a lot of experience with, uh, people speaking, uh, dishonestly or, uh, wanting to speak with authority before they're ready, like before they've really figured out what they're saying. Um, and yeah, so uh, I feel like that will stifle and, and hinder and hurt uh, that what I have to say and share um, is a developing thing it's like it's in process it's in progress and and you need to let it like bloom let it um naturally come uh and if you force it then you you box it in uh and you lie and you uh lose credibility um as well so um but yeah some of these core ideas is uh 
well, actually, I don't know how much time we have left. We have you know, some, um, the, the idea of being the practice of your art, uh, and that, that, that to me, you know, I, I talk about it on here, but, but that's something that, that pushes me, uh, that feels like it's, it's a core value, um, to, uh, so like the idea of being the practice of your art is like you, you can, um, like be yourself, um, that you can bring your, uh, your, um, interests, your weaknesses and strengths, your personality, uh, you can, you can bring all that to your art practice, that your art practice is not self-denying, or, uh, that it, the idea is you, you're going to bring all of yourself to your practice, and that will be the best thing to do. Um, it doesn't mean you're going to be the best artist, you know, in some people's minds, or have the most success or whatever, but it's my value. You know, <laughs> that's my way of doing it, and... Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a beautiful and valuable way to go through life in general and to be an artist um, being the practice of your art and that it's a practice so uh, there's there's other I feel like there's there's pressure for your art to be a business to be a uh, product um, to be status and celebrity and then my my focus on it being a practice is more like uh, a mindful practice something you do because it's who you are because you're engaging in this long-term uh, process uh, it's the way you want to live it's 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 a way of being the same way someone like a, a yogi doing yoga it's it's a way of being um almost like a spiritual practice or a martial arts practice, kind of uh, thinking of the term practice. Um, but that it's your practice, so it's not someone else's. Because you you can't just follow someone else's practice and be actualizing or showing up as yourself. And there's no guidebook, there's no rules and way you need to go. Um... And I think the maybe like to to kind of get uh, uh, encouraging or like cheerleading here. Um, the what is it that that makes art good? Like it to me, it is not something that robots can do <laughs> like um the beautiful art in the world to me is not an expression of hard work and um conquest it is a, a reflection of the human soul or the, and, and the human body um that you can't separate it it's the wisdom of the human body being expressed here through art. Um, and so to be, to, to, to em, embody your practice or your art to, to sh really try to show up, uh, will make more human art, uh, a more human like art. Cause there's definitely a way to do art to me that's more robotic, uh, that, you know, it mimics what a robot could do. Um, mm -hmm. and then there's art that, uh, that's more human. So, um, so I'm definitely, you know, 
I definitely have a perspective and some values to express. Uh, I don't, I don't think people need to agree, but, uh, you, it doesn't really matter what I, what I think and what my, uh, uh, you know, beliefs are exactly if, uh, if you're able to enjoy, uh, what I'm saying, if, and I think in some, in some ways that's really what matters is, uh, I, uh, it's, you know, hopefully it's refreshing to hear someone speak this way, that there's something encouraging, uh, about it. There's something healing and, and good about it. Um, uh, or, or challenging to you, like whatever little, way that that it serves um is is good and i'm happy to to provide that and be a part of that for people um and i'm definitely not looking for followers of of my way of doing it i just uh, i would rather um inspire and uh prod (laughs) provoke (laughs) um i would rather provoke um So, uh, yeah, I guess that, I guess that's enough on that point. Uh, kind of the the main point of, of what I find I have, you know, where I'm coming from when I, when I share my thoughts here. Um, and, and it's still, it's still in development. I don't have, uh, have it all clear yet. Um, I think my way of thinking it like does lend itself pretty well to comic book illustration specifically, uh, because you're doodling on the page. Like you might make it look really beautiful and put a lot of, a lot of work into your lines, but you're doodling, uh, and you are, and, and, it's it is a medium that's going to lend itself to doodling and to um, speed uh, and expressiveness, and like speed of expression, and so to to be able to approach the art and the practice of it in a more lighthearted, playful way, uh, in a more expressive way, uh, is probably going to be right on track. Um, so uh, I do I do think it's it's especially good for that. And that's probably why I've I've been always driven towards this kind of art. Uh, I I'm really not very interested in in uh, making more high quality or meticulous art pieces. Um, I I don't like I don't like to move slowly. Um, and that might sound funny because these, uh, drawing these comic pages takes lots of hours and I do put a lot of hours into doing it. Um, but I don't move slowly when I do it. And I like, uh, and I like, I like storytelling. Um, obviously that's, that's the main part of that is, uh, storytelling and, and, uh, you know, not just, it's not so much capturing expressions, but expressing, um, like, uh, capturing expressions. Um, I had a thought that I'm kind of losing here. Um, I think there are, you could say there are artists that are, um, enthralled by, and, you know, uh, the, they're trying to capture the acting, uh, of like their characters in the, in a comic, let's say they're trying to capture the beauty of a figure, um, or, uh, its expression and whatnot. Um, whereas when I draw, uh, I am trying to act like I, I'm acting on the page, like the, all these characters are me, like in a way, like it's hard to explain, but I'm kind of, I, I feel like that's right in my, in my body that, that in, on some level I'm, I'm acting through these figures that I doodle. 
Uh, whereas I think there are artists that, um, it's not them acting on the page. They're trying to capture something external that's beautiful or powerful or whatever. Uh, which I think is is beautiful and awesome too. I do like that kind of stuff, and I think it can. I think those that can lend lend itself well to uh, other sorts of art forms than than comics, um, pretty well too. Um, but but I think my way is is particularly uh, well suited to to this medium uh, of you know acting, communicating, and storytelling here. This is the Pentel Pocket Brush. I used to actually use a brush and, and dip it in ink. Uh, and um, it just takes longer. It feels really unnecessary since I don't really do any brush work. Now, I have, I've done it before, but I, I generally don't do any brush work, so I don't need a high-quality brush. Um, I can just use anything, really. Uh, I, I grabbed my pencil right there, and I, I think I did it earlier, too. I'm just going to comment on that. I, I'm in the middle of the inking phase, and I grab my pencil because as I'm looking at what I'm completing, I realize I think there should be more f shadow form black on, on this figure. I don't want to mess up where I put it, so let me just grab the pencil really quickly and add a little more. Um, I would rather grab the pencil during the ink phase and add a little more than over you know be overly cautious in the pencil phase and add too much detail which is going to eat up time that maybe wasn't even needed most of the time it won't be and then you're training yourself to need that every time um which isn't going to help you like speed up if, if that's what you're interested in which i am Yeah, so a little bit of shadows on the figures, on the ground. I wasn't quite sure how much shadow to add on to, to Sword's body there. I think I do go back and add a little more on his uh, boot, on his, uh, l his left leg, because uh, it'll just help help it stand out and, and look more connected to, the, yep, see, I just did it. I added the black there. So it, even just from a distance, it's more clear that that's all leg. It's like the upper leg and lower leg is all connected. Um, and it's in front of that, you know, background of the raft. So, um, some of that's easier to, to finally decide, uh, at this phase. Yeah, here I decided she. This this panel looked rather um, because of the lighting and the angle and stuff. There's not a lot of uh, and 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 you know how she's dressed and whatnot. There weren't a lot of obvious places to to throw shadow or blacks. So uh, last minute there, I was like, I'm just gonna throw some shadow um, on on her on her face just to give it form and separate it from the background because it just looked like a kind of too simple of a panel. Yeah. Yes, this, uh, yeah, this woman here, uh, she's got surgically installed, like, bumps on her eyebrow and along her forehead, her, across her head. Um, hopefully that was clear enough, because I think, uh, like, I just showed it without explaining it, and, and maybe at some point in the comic it'll go more into that. But uh, I, f I feel like that was obvious enough. Um, and that she has this mask that kind of has uh, teeth on it, like a crocodile snout. So uh, the idea is uh, she serves King Croc and she is trying to 
make herself look more croc-like, more lizard-like. So she's shaved her head. And that's because she's like actually a character in this comic that has gone through some stuff. Um, and she's going to have a journey of her own here. And so um, we're trying to show that she has given up her own identity so much and her own beauty as a, as a woman so much to to be a, uh, a to serve the crocodile guy um, to serve the lizards um, so uh, what better way to show that than visually like to and to make it clear what she's given up uh, and how how far she's gone to serve uh, these evil masters um, then, you know, what better way to do it than to have her actually uh, mutilate her body to it, to do it. Um, so yeah, it'll be fun to, it'll be fun to show like her background and, uh, how she's going to, uh, change over, over the series. I've never done such a long series. I mean, I have big ideas for, for some of these things, but it isn't all figured out. Uh, I'm, I've am i got a, some, I don't know, page upon page of notes, uh, and that's about it. Uh, some of it's like different, you know, countries and like lore or history, uh, characters. Um, but it's not, it's not clear what the story will be, uh, each, you know, episode or something. So, um, and, and there's a lot I'm going to have to figure out as I go. Um, or I was originally considering letting this Denise, this, uh, uh, bad guy here die, but, um, at the end of this episode, uh, but it's better to, uh, to keep her around as I realized uh, there was a lot more to her character that was worth uh, showing later and incorporating. Um, but yeah, I've never done such a big, long story. Um, I am, I'm looking forward to that. It's, it's definitely a very different kind of storytelling. Yes. And here's the final page. Yeah, pretty straightforward uh, in that last panel. Pretty clear uh, composition. And that is it for this week. Be the practice of your art and encourage others to do the same. I'll be doing that over here. See you next week.